Hey there, welcome back to Coding at Home. Hey there, welcome back. I'm Matt from the Code Hub. Uh, we are gonna do some more work on the Sonic Workshop today. Um, you should stop and give yourself a little pat on the back though, because you've the amount of work that you've done so far has been really impressive. We've implemented a ton of new code. We've reused functions. We've done a bit of interesting math to change the tint color that we applied to our, our graphic. We've, we've actually done a, a lot of work and we've used a lot of new functions, uh, like that fabs one that we used yesterday. A lot of that's probably brand new to, to you. And um, there's a lot of pieces to put together. Throughout this whole course, all we've been doing is presenting you with lots of material in some cases, and it's down to you to kind of put it put it back together after the fact. It doesn't always happen immediately, and that's why we go over some concepts again and again from day to day. Um, and even if you're an old hand at programming, I, I find this stuff useful when I go through it again and, and get a little refresher into whatever it is. If it's closures, great. Uh, maybe it, it comes together in a, in a bit of a different way and I now appreciate certain aspects of it a little bit more. You'll find that as you go on through your programming career that you'll get new appreciations of old technologies that you've been looking at uh, throughout your, your coding life. So without any further ado, let's get back over to the iPad. Let's get coding in uh, Sonic Workshop. All right, so over we go. We are gonna jump right into Swift Playgrounds today. And you can see right where I left off, I, uh, I'm i in your own functions, right? And here's that fabs function I was talking about. I hope you had a chance to play around with this a little bit yesterday. I hope you went into the crystals file here and so this is our new function uh, here. I know <laughs> uh, I made a note yesterday about naming this something useful so that you can come back to it later and go, oh yeah, I know what this does. In, in our case, I called it create color changing graphic. Uh, I know somebody downstairs called their, um, their new function, what's up my peeps, <laughs> which is great, this fun name, uh, maybe a little bit more difficult to understand what it does exactly, uh, especially when you come back to that code in a couple of months time or a year's time. Um, but yeah, it's all about your own style anyway, and you're going to develop your own style as a, as a programmer as you keep going. All right, so we have our function here that we defined and let's expand this so we can see a little bit better. So we have our co create color change in graphics. So we know what it's going to do because we create a graphic with the image that someone passes in and then we set this on touch moved handler and there's a parameter passed in so some of you might be wondering though where on earth is this parameter coming from i don't get like why is this changing all of a sudden so yeah we're getting this called every time i move my finger up and down and right now it's up and down because we're using the y position uh, every time we move our finger up and down on the graphic we're getting called this method. Well, let's go, let's go dig in and let's try to find where this is actually defined. All right, so let's go off. We'll tap on this button for files. We'll see if it's first, see if it's defined in here anywhere. Um, this is a function on our graphic. So let's tap on graphic cluster. Maybe that's it. Uh, this just looks like, like one big helper method, this add graphic cluster. And there's a comment here that says the add graphic cluster function displays the graphics in a fan shape and plays each sound. Okay. So we pass it an image and an array of sounds and we place it at a certain point. Okay. Well, that's not exactly what we want. Maybe we can check out graphic loops. I have a feeling that's not it either yet. Yeah, we can see that there's just one function defined in this file which is fine as well. We've seen other code where we have a new file defined and it it contains a class. Uh, so let's see if any of these, tone generator might contain a class. Let's see, so we have a tone output. This looks very similar to the stuff we used in um, Swan's Quest. 
There's no class defined in this one. So you don't necessarily have to put just a class in a new file. As you can see here, this is just a way for the guys at Apple to organize their code. And they said, all right, well, I wanna, this function is gonna specifically at, be for adding tones and that's it, like placing it on the scene and making sure, giving some accessibility hints. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that they had a new type that they wanted to define in a new file. They just wanted to organize their code in a certain way and say, okay, look, all my tone generator related functions will be in this file. So I'm gonna tap on these X's here and close a few of these files. And so if we wanna go dig deeper into the source, we can always go up to the three dots and go to advanced and then view the auxiliary source files. All right, and now we're gonna go into contents We will go from there into, let's see, I think it's gonna be in modules. And so we're looking for the graphic type definition here. So let's have a look in SPC core and sources, playground. Okay, it's not in there. It's not in supporting, nope. Let's see if it's in extensions, nope. All right, so let's back out. So let's see, the next most likely one, let's try Sonic resources. This might just be resources. No, nope, this is, these are, this is just an enumeration with all the Sonic sounds and, a, and an extension for loops. So that's not what we want. Let's see the assessment. That's not what we want. Let's see sources. There's our, our view controller that drives the live view. We looked at core. Let's look at the game, maybe. That's a player, okay. The scene. Oh, here we go. So if you look in the SPC scene.playground module, we're gonna open that up, look in sources. And then down here, we have a file called graphic. So we tap on the file name and then we tap on this over here to highlight, to get rid of our, our file browser. And we can see we have a couple of things. We have a couple frameworks imported, right? So this is other people's code that they've imported so they can now use it in this file. This is an enumeration of all the types of graphics. So we can have graphics, sprites, characters, buttons, and labels. Okay. We're only using the, the graphic in this playground so far. We have basic shapes is a, another enum that we used in Swan's Quest that maybe we'll talk about a little bit next week. We have a color, we have a gradient color, an image, okay, shape type. Okay, well here is where we start. We have this class graphic and then a colon and message control. All right, so this tells us from the comment here that this is a graphic object made from an image or a string that can be placed on the scene. Cool, that's what we want. Well, let's have a look to see. We have a definition here of public var on touch moved handler. So this is our unnamed function. They actually save it off in a, a property on our class. And this is what the type definition looks like. So you can see here, this is the type definition for suppress message sending. It's a Boolean, right? So it's either true or false. The default animation time doesn't have a type definition there because they just assign it to 0 0.5. So Swift automatically infers that it needs to be a double. We have a graphic type property that's given a graphic type type. So we can see that this is just another way of defining the type. So this function, it includes a touch. So we have two sets of parentheses. The first set encloses the whole function definition. And then the next set in here, this is for the parameters that get passed in. So it expects a touch parameter and it's gonna return void. So it won't return any message or any information out of that function. 
we have our public function set on touch handler. So that's our, our touch handler. Here's our on touch moved handler. And all we do here is assign the handler that we pass in to our property. So let's go scroll down and see if there's anywhere where we call that on touch moved handler. So let's see, here's some accessibility hints and some localization stuff. Here's where we initialize. Here's some initializers for our graphic. I'm going to keep scrolling down. Here's another initializer that takes a shape, a color, a gradient color, and a name. Here's a function to update the shape. Here's a function to update the size. Another function called send. Let's see, we'll keep going. There's the alpha, there's a computed property. That's another coding concept that we haven't even touched yet. Um, that, that's kind of interesting in Swift. There's our position. Here's a place function where we can place the graphic at a certain point. There's the Y scale and the X scale. There's an, an image property. Here's where we set the tint color. Here's an interesting distance from point function. And remember we use that in lights camera code to when we were building our game, we use that distance from function to figure out how far away something was from us. And if it was close enough to make contact with us, it counted as a hit, or maybe we collected something if that's what our game was doing. So here's a remove action. Let's keep going. Here's some animation stuff. This SK action is are there animations. There are rotations. So these are the, you know, remember we have a glow method on our graphic and we have a scale. So if we keep going down, you can see there's a lot of code that they've written for this particular class. There's a spin, there's another animation. Here, they, someone's used a, this little mark is a nice way of letting the, the tool that you're using to write this code, in this case, Swift Playgrounds, but in on the Mac, you'd be using something like Xcode. Um, that'll give you a special sort of highlight to let you know that it's a new section of code. It's another way of organizing our code. So that's the audio stuff. So I actually don't see any of the the touch stuff in here. So we don't, we're not getting any of the touch events in here, but you can see already, this is a huge amount of work that someone's done just for us to be able to place a graphic on the, on the screen. So let's hit this back arrow here. And let's have a quick look to see if there's anything that looks likely for handling our touches. Let's tap on this touch dot Swift. So this is a structure that just holds information about the touch. There's this interesting uh, variable here, touched graphic. That might be kind of useful to use at a certain point if we decide to start developing a game using this, this code. All right, so I don't see anything in here that shows off where we're actually getting those touch events. So what we'll do is on Monday, we'll explore that a little bit more because you can see there's actually a lot of code in here to go consider. So we'll go look at that on, on Monday, but that's an interesting look at the, the graphic.swift because th there's so much code written for us to do, to make it look interesting and let us do things like, you know, graphic.set on touch moved handler, set the tint color, return the graphic, play sounds, glow. There, there's actually been a, a, a large amount of work done prior to us even coming to this playground. So let's see, let's, let's run this code and then we'll get back to finishing off this particular playground. 
All right, there's my mushroom. If I swipe my finger up and down the mushroom, it's changing its tint color. And all I had to do here was use my new create color changing graphic function to create my graphic. And then I placed it on the scene. So let's go back to the instructions here. And let's add a touch handler. So we're gonna add this, we're gonna make this thing play sound because this is Sonic Workshop after all. So inside our create color changing graphic, we're also gonna create and we're gonna add an on touch handler. So where do you think I need to add this? So the way here, let's open it up so we can actually see how this code flows. First, we create the graphic here by using the initializer. Then we set the on touch handler and then we write a bit of code in here to perform the actions when we move, when we get um, touches moving on our graphic. Then this closes out our on touch handler. So we wanna make sure we write code outside of these two braces here, this one and this one, because that's all run when we get those touch moved events. So I'm gonna hit the return key down here. And now I'm gonna set an on touch handler for my graphic. So I'll do graphic dot Scroll over to set on touch handler. And again, remember we're setting a closure. This one's a bit simpler because it takes no parameters. And we're just gonna have it play a sound here. Now, we received a sound. When we created this function definition, we actually included a sound as a parameter. So let's use that sound that someone passes in. So we can see sound in the autocomplete bar. We'll set the volume to uh, 100. Now let's try running our code. Okay, there we go. Okay, that's our creepy two sound. Let's try changing that and see if, if we're we're actually playing the right sound here. So let's play the let's play the cowbell. Let's run that. Okay. Okay, there's our car bell. Now you can see that the cowbell has stopped playing, but I'm still getting those on touch moved events. So now we can start to explore when those different messages are being sent. This is very useful because that's a, a main aspect of programming is you have to know when certain things are getting sent. <laughs> Got my underwater. There we go. We'll just calm, calm the music down for a second. It's very important to know when and in what order messages get sent because then you can know, okay, this is when I want something to happen frequently like this, the updating of the color as I move my finger around. You have to know that that on touch is moved or on on touch moved handler is going to get called very frequently and it's going to get that updated position. Whereas my on touch handler is only going to get called the first time I put my finger down on the graphic. So that's useful because maybe you don't want to do this kind of math every couple of fractions of a second when I get a message saying that my, my finger is moved on the screen. Maybe I want to just do it once and say, oh, yeah, we'll just wherever the person's finger touches down, that's where we'll um, we'll set the tint color to that. And then we won't keep updating it as we keep moving around. It's something to consider when we're when we're writing our code. All right, let's see what else we can do. So we added a touch handler and we play that cowbell sound. We can see that's how we would play our sound with volume 80. We can also play an instrument. Okay, or we can play music. Just like we do, uh, if we go back to the main file, we play music here, play that underwater music. So let's see, let's try changing this up. So we've done enough in, if we go back to crystals, we've done enough in this 
other function, this create crystal function, where we play a sound. Let's let's change our create color changing graphic to play an instrument. So I'm gonna to play an instrument. We take an instrument and we take a note, and then we play a volume. So let's do this. Let's add two parameters. I'm gonna take get rid of the sound parameter. And I'm going to call this one instrument instead. And instead of, I have to change the type because the type isn't going to be an instrument anymore. It's going to be a, an inst a, I think it's a sonic instrument. Or no, actually, no, it's just a regular instrument. Now I want to add another parameter to take the note as well. So this looks like it's going to be uh, an integer. So let's, let's do that. We're going to put a comma and we're going to say, uh, we're going to call this note. And then we have to tell Swift what type of parameter this is. And we're going to say that it's an int. Luckily that's the very first one in my autocomplete bar. So I'll tap on int. All right. So I've got a small error here. If I go look at here, my play sound function is saying it doesn't know anything about sound. Well, of course, because I we got rid of that out of the function definition. And we want to change this function anyway to be called play instrument instead of play sound. So let's do that. We're going to get rid of play sound. And I'll just tap on play sound and delete the whole thing. And we'll use play instrument instead. So play We'll scroll over in the autocomplete bar to play instrument. Actually, if we look here, it says that the note is looking for a double, not uh, an int. So we can go and change that as well. So the instrument kind, oh, you know what? Actually, we also need to then change what gets passed in here. So it's not just an instrument type, it's an instrument.kind. So let's go tap on our function definition here. I'm going to press and hold the space bar and then move my cursor over and I'm going to put a dot and then I'm going to put a capital K for kind because I basically want to have my, the user of this function pass in the same information that I'm going to pass on to the play instrument call. And then we'll also, while we're here, we'll change the note from an int to a double. All right, so now that we've changed our this instrument parameter to an instrument.kind, it matches this type here. So we can say, all right, cool, we'll, we'll pass in our instrument. The note that we take will be the note parameter. So we'll hit note. And then for volume, we'll do the same. We'll just hard code 100. So let's see. I still have a red dot, though. So what's going on? Let's tap on that and find out. All right, it's telling us that there's an extra argument sound in call. So let's tap on this error and it brings us to the main file. And it, this create color changing graphic function call is has a problem with this sound parameter because of course it doesn't exist anymore. We, we've changed the, the method signature. So let's change this. I'm going to tap on this parentheses right here. Actually, and we'll, actually, you know what, we'll leave the image there. So we'll just tap on sound. We'll start at sound and that's where we'll fix things from. We'll tap on sound. I'm actually going to delete that. I'm going to delete cowbell as well. And starting just after the comma for my image parameter, now I'm going to add in my instrument parameter. So instrument. I'll put in the colon. And now when we're calling a function, remember, we use this colon to separate the the name of a parameter or the name of a variable from the type that it is when we're defining functions and variables. But when we're calling a function, we include that parameter label and then after the colon, that's where we put the value that we're passing in for that 
label. So let's let's use a dot. It'll bring up a Swift is smart enough to say, ah, oh, yep, you need an instrument kind here. So let's use a let's use an electric guitar here. Now we need another thing here. Actually, the compiler helps us out and says, hey, you're missing an argument for the parameter note in this call. So we can actually fix it just by hitting the fix button. That's always nice. So the note we'll play is we'll play the note 80. Again, I'm no musical genius, no musical anything really. So I'm not 100% sure what that's gonna sound like, but we can experiment with it and find out what the different numbers mean and how they sound. Okay, so now I've got rid of all my errors. Let's hit play. Let's hit run my code and um, see what we get. All right, there's the mushroom. There's our underwater music is playing. We'll actually turn that background music off. And I actually don't hear anything, do you? Okay, so let's go check and see. Maybe we, maybe we made a mistake. Let's tap on the crystals file. And let's see. Well, we have our graphic set on touch handler here. We play an instrument. We play a note and we set the volume. It looks similar to this. Note 80, volume 80. We're passing in an electric guitar, note 80, and that's just getting used. Let's try running it. Maybe we, maybe we missed it. Well, it's definitely not playing. So oh, let's see, maybe it's a problem with our on touch handler. Let's go back to crystals. And let's just, just to make sure, let's try actually hard coding in that instrument here. So let's do dot. Let's try electric guitar. Let's try the exact same things that we passed in. We'll try the note 80. Let's run our code. And this happens a lot. This is base. This is debugging right here. All right, I don't hear it. Okay. All right. So we're we're not getting our sound. We have it turned up. Let's try changing our instrument. Maybe it's an issue with the electric guitar. Let's try changing it to a bass guitar. No, not, not bass guitar either. Let's try that bass synth since that's the one they, they recommend. All right, well that still doesn't work as we tap on our mushroom. You can see I'm tapping on it from the color changes. Let's try changing the note to something like one. All right, here we go. We'll turn off the background music just for a second. Oh, that's not working. So let's try, let's try another debug. So maybe another thing that might be happening is maybe we can see that this is being called. Maybe the on touch handler isn't being called. So let's try adding something that we knew was working. So we'll add a play, play sound call in here. We'll call play sound. We'll add a sound, we'll hit the dot to bring up all the sound options we can have. So we'll do, can you hear me? Cause that's appropriate. We're trying to figure out if we can be heard, so we'll do 100. And let's hit run my code. So now when someone touches this graphic, what should happen is we should play the instrument, bass synth, with a note of one at volume 100. And then we should also play a sound, can you hear me, at volume 100. So let's, let's try it out. Okay, interesting. That's our play sound. Let's try commenting out our play sound and run it again.
Yeah, no. So play instrument isn't working for us right at the moment. All right, so we can dig into that. That can be something we can debug maybe on, on Monday a little bit. Let's keep going, though. Let's hit continue. So there's a, a little note here about looping sounds. So instead of playing a sound once or not at all, in the case of our play instrument call, we can use the touch handler to toggle a loop on and off. All right, so we can create a new loop by passing in a sound and it expects a, a sound parameter. And then, so we just create it, a, it's a loop type that takes a sound and we can toggle it on and off by just calling this loop.toggle function. So there's a code example here Oh, called a looping mushroom. And in fact, I was just gonna propose that what we do is let's create a new function in here in the crystals file that'll do just that. It'll play a sound. This, this instrument's one maybe we'll have to tinker with a little bit more, but we'll have a color changing mushroom anyway for now that doesn't play any sound because the play instrument call doesn't quite work the way we expect it to. And now we're gonna create this, maybe we won't call it a looping mushroom, we'll call it something else. So let's, let's start creating our function. So it's gonna be called public because I want us to be able to access it from outside this file, public funk, I'm gonna tap on the keyword here to get the stuff set up for me. Let's call it, let's call it looping graphic. So anybody can put in whatever graphic they want in there. We're gonna take, just like we do in this code example, we'll take an image and we'll take a sound. So we are gonna tap on this guy. Oops. Oops, where's my little accessibility thing? So what I did was I tapped on the uh, brace here to select the whole thing. Now I'm gonna add, I need to add two parameters and I need to add a return type because I wanna return a graphic like we do with the other functions. So let's add a parameter. We're gonna call it image. And it's gonna be of type image with a capital I. And I called it lopping graphic, which is not exactly what I want. So then I'm gonna tap on these two dots here and drag out so it adds another parameter. And we're gonna have someone pass in a sound if they wanna use this looping graphic. And it's gonna be of type sonic sound. Okay. While I'm sitting here, now I'm gonna change it because that typo is bugging me. So looping graphic. And now I'm gonna tap on the brace again so I can now add a return type easily. And then it adds the dash and the greater than symbol. You can find those here above the X. And then the, G, the greater than symbol is you just tap on the G and you drag down to the left to get that symbol. So we wanna return a graphic. There's my graphic in the autocomplete bar. And now we're gonna do what we did above. We'll say let graphic equal, and we'll use an initializer. So graphic, we'll use the parentheses. We'll pass in an image. And we'll just pass in the image that the user has passed in, so we'll just use this image, lowercase i image, in our case here. And then on the, the touch handler, we won't have a on touch moved handler, but what we will do is for our um, our on touch handler, so we'll do graphic dot set on touch handler. This is where we're gonna create a loop with our sound and then we're gonna to call toggle in here. Now, what I might do is, I just need to get a hold of this loop. So I, what I might do is after I have a variable for my graphic, I might keep a variable for my loop outside of my touch handler. So let's, let's do that. Let's do let loop. And then we'll make that equal to, and we'll use an initializer to create a loop. So we'll do capital L, 
Oh, there it is. Tap it on the autocomplete bar. We'll tap this first parentheses in the autocomplete bar. And that gives us one result for initializers we can use. So we'll use that sound that gets passed in. And you remember the sound gets passed in right here in our function definition. So we'll just use lowercase sound. And then now this little hint here about calling loop.toggle, we'll just call that in our onTouch handler. So we'll say loop dot, and here we go, toggle. And that's it. Right? Is that all we need for our function? Well, this red dot's telling me no. So I'm going to tap on this. And it tells me that I'm missing return in a function expected to return graphic. Okay, this is probably one of the more clear error messages we've seen. So let's, let's do that. Now, we want to make sure that you're outside. And this is where you have to get good at matching these braces. If you miss and you forget about this one, and you say, oh, this is where the function is closed. And you do return graphic here. So I'll start typing in graphic. This is a bit of a problem because I can't return something from inside my on touch handler. And in fact, it tells me, it gives me this error message saying, Hey, you're, you're trying to return something when I don't want anything out of this function. So we'll actually move this. And the way we'll move this is we'll actually tap on the closing brace. We'll just drag up. You know, before we've always dragged down to include more code in. We can also drag up to exclude some code from being run. All right, so now we got rid of our red dots. If we run our code, what do you think is going to happen? There's our mushroom. I can play music. My instrument's not being played because I have the play sound commented out. But it's not looping. That's because I haven't called this function yet. We've defined this function, but we haven't called it yet. So let's go back to main. Let's create a second graphic. We'll say less. We'll call this one a looping graphic. And we're going to use our function to get that graphic. So we'll say, where is it? Create looping graphic is somewhere in here. Let's create crystal. And actually, we didn't call it create looping graphic. I might change that. So instead of looping graphic, we call we rename it to be create looping graphic to match the other ones. But for now, we'll just add an image literal here. We'll pick a, let's pick one of these crystals. We'll give it a sound. So we use a dot here to pick our sounds. So we'll go dot. And wait for that autocomplete bar. And now it's not showing up. So, well, I know there's one called err. But that's, that's not great just guessing. And in fact, I still have a red dot. Let's tap on that red dot and see what the problem is. So it's telling us... Where's my little thing? It's telling us, oops, you have an error. You can't use the same variable to set its initial value. Okay, well, maybe this is the problem. Let's go check our function name. Tap on crystals. Uh, we might have an issue here because we're calling this the same as our variable. Well, let's let's update this and rename it now. So we're going to call it create looping graphic. Maybe that'll fix the problem. Let's see. I'm using camel case. That's why the L is capitalized and the G is capitalized. If we go back to the main function, we'll see that that's where the error is coming from. So let's rename this to create looping graphic. Okay, and now if I delete this, now I can see the different ones. 
All right, this one sounds like fun. It's like banana, but different. Let's let's see. Let's place this on the scene because we have to remember to place it on the scene too. So I'll do scene dot place. Scene lowercase s dot place. We're gonna place our looping graphic at a given point. Now we don't want to place it at the same place as our mushroom, so we'll maybe move it over here and, and up a bit. So we'll create a point by tapping on the point autocomplete bar. We'll tap on the open parentheses. We'll use X and Y. And let's put it at 200 and 200 in the sky. And let's run it. Okay, there's our new crystal. There's our mushroom that's still got its on-touch handler and its lack of instrument playing. Let's touch on our crystal. Okay. Now I'm not touching on it again, but it keeps playing over and over again. Now let's tap on the crystal again. Okay, so it finished out the sound and then it, it stopped playing because I hit, it, it ran our toggle code. All right, so that's looking pretty good so far. Let's see, how far are we here? We've got a few more instructions to follow. We're gonna pick that up again on Monday and we'll also look into our, how we handle those touches and how that on touch handler and on touch moved handler gets called. But this is a pretty good, pretty good spot to leave it for today. You've done some good work. Feel free to create, now we've created another, yet another function in here. Feel free to create a few more so you can start customizing your, your functions and making them useful in, in different ways. Maybe you wanna change, instead of set tint color, maybe you had experimented with changing some other color or changing the position or scale. Try playing around with that over the weekend and uh and we'll see you on monday good work <laughs>